Hello, Professor. Good afternoon. My name is Kenneth Lim, and this is my student ID. This is my email, and I'm today going to present it about my PBL report. So, about general academic knowledge, I learned in week one many things about a factor. I learned about what is a factor, and then the dot product of a factor, cross product of a factor, also the factor magnitude. And then in week two, I learned about uh, the how AI works, which is by representing data through factors, which is a fundamental concept in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Like for example, if I have this data and this data I can represent it as a factor A like this and then I also learned about n-dimensional factors so uh, what I learned before this is only factors is only like two or three dimensional but in this lesson in this class I learned that a factor can be more than that and then I learned also the component of n-dimensional factors and how to present them I also learned about orthogonal projections, which is really applicable in the AI world, which is the process of projecting a factor into another factor or subspace in such way that the projected factor is orthogonal or perpendicular. And this is the formula of the factor that I learned. I also learned a unit, what is a unique factor, and I also learned that AI fundamental concept, which is to enable machine to make informed decision or pandan and predictions, yechek based on data-driven insights. I also learned uh, linear equation, also learned system of linear equation, and how a uh, system of linear equation can be presented as matrix. And then I learned also like the coefficient ma matrix, with, which is a matrix that contains the co coefficient of the variable in the system of linear equation. Like this is the linear equation, can be represented as one matrix. I also learned uh, various matrix operations such as augmented matrix. And then I also learned REF or row, row echelon form and uh, RREF, reduce row echelon form. Especially I remember these two because I was answering other people question and it was related to this one so I searched on YouTube and I found about this thing because before I never introduced by this kind of uh, theory so I'm really thankful that I joined this class and got to learn this raw equivalent form and reduced raw equivalent form. The next is matrix rank which is related with REF and RREF. The number of the, the leading one in REF is equal to the rank of the matrix. So, uh, and then importance of rank in finding optimal solution. I also learned this for linear programming, a common task, which is to find the optimal solution that maximize or minimize the objective function while satisfying a set of constraints. In week three, I learned matrix operation. This time we lear I learned matrix transpose. This is the formula for transposing and I learned also matrix inverse. I also learned matrix determinant and our lower upper decomposition in someone's post. The week four I learned a least square solution which is a method to use to find approximate solution to an over-determined system of linear equations. I also learned the normal equation and then the key R decomposition. I actually learned uh, the LU decomposition and QR decomposition from one post in uh, from a student so it's kind of good that I can understand both concept in one post and then uh, in such an easy way to understand and also the Graham Smith process which is an orthogonalization method used in linear algebra to transform a set of linearly independent factors into a set of orthogonal. I will, uh, in week 5, I learned about eigenvectors, which is a special factors that represent a direction of the matrix transformation that goes not change direction but only its magnitude. I also learned diagonalization, uh, and uh, which leads me to singular value decomposition, which is to decompose a given matrix into three separate matrices which can provide valuable insights into the properties and the structure of the original matrix. I also learned uh, reduce SVD, in which re the resulting matrix are smaller in size, but making it computationally and memory e efficient. Also, 
pseudo inverse, which is a generalization of the matrix inverse for the non square matrices, singular non invertible matrix. Uh, in the week six, I learned quadratic form, a mathematical expression that consists of variable raised to the second power, which is basically a function with uh, linear terms but no higher order terms. I learned the conic section, which is uh, when we have a geometric shape and then we cut it into it resulted into a circle ellipse parabola and hyperbole next one I learned about principal axis theorem which states that the moment of inertia of an object about an axis is parallel to and at the distance d from an axis through its center of mass which is quite resembles the physics equivalence of inertia inertia moment then the next thing I learned about limit, differentiation, and derivative, which I already learned in Calculus 1. For five things that I learned and know how to find after I study uh, Math for AI is uh, the AI fundamental concept. Because before joining this class, I really don't know the mechanics of AI and on how AI works. And it's actually really simple, which is enable a machine to inform decision to make decision and prediction based on the data driven insights and which uh, and then the data are can be presented to the to the machine by matrices by finding those optimal solution from the matrix we can can lead the to the solution to the artificial intelligence as well the second one i am able to do factor operations with more than three dimensions such as orthogonal projection using coding i use python a lot like before this i never been able to imagine that factors are Factors can have more than three dimensions, so it's really helpful for me to learn Python. The next thing I'm able to do basic matrix operations such as augmented matrix, transpose, in inverse determinant, and also a more complex complex matrix operations such as finding REF, RIF, which need create a bit creativity in it. I learned about matrix rank, QR, and LU decomposition, which finally leads to SVD. I can also find approximate solutions from most multiple data points using best fit curves, and also determining whether a function is convex or concave. And also, besides all the technical stuff, I learned uh, myself from Professor Ali Sanggu, which is if we understand the basic concept of something, even though the problem is getting more complicated, we will still be able to understand it, such as the factor problem even though i only understand the 2d factor and 3d factor max but in this class i can under understand how to solve seven dimension factors and above uh, this is my most meaningful answer that i give which is a uh, problem of about convex of a function. Uh, why? Because I provide several different ways to determine whether the function is convex or concave. And from this post, I learned that there are multiple ways, multiple ways to solve a mathematical problem. Besides using the textbook method, uh, we can be creative in solving math problems. However, the most optimal way to solve math problems is by determining what the next step is so we can choose the perfect way to adjust to the next step we're going to execute for example for this post because the next step is to code the solution I choose one specific method to solve the problem that will ease me in writing the code for the solution and for the participation point uh, this is the data uh, so I contributed to this class through answer students or professors theoretical question using outside sources to support my answers so that I can also show to other students another resources, another perspective in answering those questions. Since I was always late to answer questions, the original question of open problems were usually already answered by other students. So mostly I upgraded their answers by making the matrix to a bigger matrix or from finding the maximum and minimum point of a 2D graphic like uh, this function only fx with one variable into a 3D graphic which a function which use two variables. Usually on those questions I applied my Python coding skills since those kind of problems are quite complicated to be solved by manual calculations. 
I also left comments or opinion on several of professor's posts about recent artificial intelligence news to keep up with the trend. I joined most of the available office hour class since I know that I was quite lagging behind in class. So I think the least I can do is to always participate in online classes to get the newest info information about the class. In office hours, I mostly ask about technical questions on how to properly involve in the Muni Kyashi Pan because I had no idea back then on how it works. And in the last office hour, I also asked to clarify things related to the midterms. And this is the number of final OK by the professor is 18. Actually, if I search my name, it's more than 30 posts that come out, but I know that some of them are repetitive and I've counted them and it's 18. Uh, what did I especially remember is that I remember searching for maximum and minimum of two variable function because since I'm I am a first year student. I haven't learned this material yet in my Calculus 2 class. So it was quite unique because I first learned about it in a Math for AI class. And then several days later, I came across the same material in my Calculus 2 class. What did you learn or fail while learning? Uh, to be honest, this is my first time having a class with this system. And so far, I enjoy it because I can learn outside the class curriculum and let my creativity be wild with the problems like upgrading the factor from three dimension into seven dimension using Python. I also learned a lot of summarized materials from fellow classmates which make the learning progress much faster because I don't need to struggle finding the truth but having the filtered essential materials for me to understand is really helps me in my learning process. When having a post finish finished on Muni Keshi Pan, not only I felt fulfilled with my effort of understanding the materials and writing it, but also I'm glad that my writings can be important for other students as well to help them understand the materials. Since I don't have uh, PBL team members yet, I leave this part empty. And this is my evaluation part. I think uh, I have contributed quite well to generate ideas and fact needed to resolve the issue. I propose learning issues with learn associated with learning. For this, I check fair because I didn't really ask questions there, but I search for relevant professor question or student question to answer. And when I study alone, yes, I do use variety of learning materials. I use other textbooks, I use YouTube videos, and I also use the professor's recorded contents as my resource. And yes, uh, in answering several of the students' questions, I often provided them with uh, new information and knowledge, which come from other resources such as YouTube videos or uh, one time I provided mathematical journal in answering a student's question about determining whether a graph is concave or convex. Yes, I am uh, quite active involved in discussions and the next one I believe I have contributed to enough learning activities in our class. Yes, I understand most of the contents learning uh, in the learning process. Also, I use professor's explanation. I use video from YouTube and I also sometimes a mathematical journal that I found on the internet and then I learn how to solve complex factor and matrix problem by using Python code and find approximate solution from multiple data using best fit curve. Uh, the most I remember that I learned from other colleagues is about QR decomposition and audio decomposition and how the QR decomposition is more advantageous to use than LU decomposition. I will score myself a 9 out of 10 in my Q&A activities. And for other students, I think they are really active in the Muni Keshi Pan and that helped the class improvement overall. This is the second self-evaluation. Yes, I participate most of the office hour class. And the second one, yes. Yeah, I think all of my questions and replies are relevant. It was proven by when the professor gave me final OK by SG Lee. Information provided by my activity was useful. Yes, I believe it was useful because I also provide other perspective in solving one problem. Yeah, I am really looking forward to other pe people's question for a problem because I can understand a new point of view, a new way to solve a problem. And yes, I did contributing in Q&A discussions. 
a lot of them and then yes I think the other students in this class are really active and having a unique perspective on solving math problems so yeah I would love to take another class with them uh, for the satisfaction for this class I'm happy that we are not restricted to one way in solving problems and the class let us explore our, our own ways to solve problems and share it with other students I like the idea that we can learn from other students' curiosity and other students can also help us with our own curiosity. Through the Munike Shipan, we can have active interaction with the professor so we can get insights accurately about things that we are curious about. A thorough things, according to the self-evaluation, is that it's kind of hard to find a certain post that we have written to check whether our question has been answered or whether our answers are correct because there is no notification in the Q&A activity and at first it was difficult for me because all the language is in Korean and reading the post structure is was a bit confusing to me however as the time goes I become more fam familiar with the system and this is for our, the colleague and the next thing is yeah this is the post that I contributed and for the project I propose an idea which is to compare, to compare the analysis of anomaly detection algorithm between uh, one class SVM versus the isolation forest. I know that there are many ways in detecting anomaly, but the two I choose is one class SVM and isolation forest. This project, I think, will provide a comprehensive overview and comparison of two popular anomaly detection algorithms between one class SVM and isolation forest. Uh, anomaly detection is a critical data process pre-processing technique in machine learning used to identify outliers or data points that deviate from the normal behavior of a data set. This project delves into the concept of practical implementation of both algorithms including their use cases, training time complexity, and advantages and real-world applications. By comparing the two methods, we aim to provide insights into the strengths and weaknesses of each approach, helping data scientists and machine learning engineers make informed decisions when choosing an anomaly detection method. And this is my final comment for the class. My experience in the online math for AI class has been quite enriching and rewarding. The one thing I really like is the flexibility in problem solving, which allows us to explore various approaches and think more creatively. Collaborating with fellow students has also been really helpful. Learning from their curiosity and offering assistance in return has really enhanced my learning process. The platform Munike Shipan has been instrumental in facilitating, facilitating interaction with the professor and getting clear answers to our questions. However, uh, some of the challenges I faced is the difficulty of keeping track of the post due to absence of notification and a bit of language barrier problem. And in summary, this class provided a unique and enjoyable learning experience through the interactive Q&A activity and flexible problem solving approaches is I think the main strength of this class. And this course equipped me with the essential mathematical skill and a deeper understanding of AI fundamentals, which I'm looking forward to applying in my future study and career. Thank you for this valuable learning experience. The end. Thank you, Professor. This is my this is the end of my presentation. I hope uh, my presentation can be useful for the learning process. Uh, thank you.